Okay, continuing on here with the video, uh, for all intents and purposes, like I said earlier, I'm finished with the Celtic Cross. You could be finished right here if that's the color you like, but I'm going to go ahead and antique it. But to do that, I need to put it into liver of sulfur, and uh, this is it here, liver of sulfur gel. And I've had this about a, <laughs> over a year, and I only use about half a bottle, but uh, it works great for antiquing the copper here. But first, before you use this liver sulfur, you want to get all the oils off the piece and you want to get all the uh, oxides off uh, from when you annealed and you quenched the fire scale off. Even though I did that, there still could be oxides and oils in your hands or from your hands on this piece. It would keep the liver of sulfur from adhering to the piece to get a proper, uh, you know, when you buff it out and make it look nice. If you don't, liver sulfur is not going to adhere to it at all. It's just going to wipe off, you know, after you go through all this, you're just going to take a rag and wipe it and it's going to all come off. Nothing's going to, you know, adhere, adhere to it. So here I have Sparex pickle. I have one ounce of Sparex pickle uh, mixed in with five ounces of water. I found, for me, that seems to be a, a good uh, proportion there. So I'm going to drop that in. Like that, I'm just going to let it soak in here for probably about five minutes. Right here, after that, I'm going to go ahead and this is baking soda and water. I'll rinse it here and then I'll put it right on in here. And this is acetone, and really, it's just um, fingernail polish remover acetone. And I'll leave it in here, but right now, let's just let it soak in the pickle mixture here, spirit pickle, and uh, be right back. Okay, we've let our piece soak in the spirit pickle for about five minutes. I'm now going to go ahead and use my copper tongs here, take the piece out, and just dip it right into the baking soda solution, baking soda water. You see it turned a little bit of a different color here. Getting all those oxides and oils off my hands or off the piece from my hands. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into the acetone where I'll let it sit for probably another five minutes. And here I just wanna show Sparex number two is what I use, dry acid compound. And uh, for my mixture, when I anneal and quench, I use one ounce of the Sparex, the granules you see here, and I mix it with five ounces of water. Stir it up really, really good. And uh, anyway, got it in acetone now. Let it sit for about five minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, I've let it soak now for about five minutes in the acetone. I have, from here on out, I will not touch the piece without having, you know, nitrile gloves on. I got to get these at Harbor Freight. They're seven mil. And uh, when I, I have five mil and seven mil. I like when I'm working with this stuff to use a seven mil, a little thicker gloves. And I also have a, a, you know, microfiber cloth here to clean. And I'll just reach in, take this out. Just lay it on the, microfiber cloth there let it just kind of air dry for right now I'm going to go ahead and heat my water and get it ready to add the liver of sulfur um, for the next segment I'm going to be taking all this outside because once you open this top it's rotten egg smell and it goes throughout the house quickly so uh, I don't really like the smell throughout my house, you know, when using this, so I need to take it out on my back deck area, and uh, we'll go on from there. Okay, I have four ounces of water just placed into a plastic container, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in the microwave, and I'll set it for a minute 40. 
and I'll take it out. So I'll keep it in there for a minute 40, then I'll take it out, and we'll go out to the back deck area. Okay, we're out here, I've heated it up, taking it out from the back deck, a little sulfur. Now, this is the thing, it's not, it's basically just put a squirt in, it's not measured out. Get it on down in here. That should get it done. there and hang on just one second so I got the liver of sulfur in there take here and just stir it up kind of get a darker yellow tint to it got my gloves on so now I'm just going to drop it into the liver of sulfur now here we just wait probably give it five minutes or until it gets you know as dark as you like once it gets that way then I'll take it out I'll be right back okay we're back out here I've given it five minutes in the liver of sulfur and time to take it out and take a look at it I may put it back in there again if I don't like how dark it gets Lay it out here. I don't know about you, but it's pretty black. I think it's done its job. That's what it should look like after about five minutes. That's if you've cleaned it properly before you put it into the liver sulfur. This is what the result is. But I'm not finished quite yet. Okay, we're back. Now, this is what it looks like, of course, with liver, liver of sulfur, LOS, put on. Uh, but I'm not quite finished yet. I found out that if you use some Renaissance wax on it and then buff it also with a felt pad, it adheres even more. It helps, this wax it actually helps seal in, you know, it, uh, the wax into the metal. It, you know, at the very end, also I'll put another coat on to make it shinier. But right now, let's go ahead and do that. Use the microfiber cloths here. Get a little dip in there. Now, gloves I have on, they're now five mil. It's more like working with my hands when I use five mil gloves. So, got some on here and basically just rub it. Rub it on. You can see it already turning blacker, darker, darker black. Get all over the, or I could say the front. Work it all in. And really this dries on here pretty quickly. If you've never used Renaissance wax. And people say, I don't like the smell. Well, some things in life you just don't like. But it works, it works really well. I was introduced to, you know, Renaissance Wax about a year ago, and I've used it on all my pieces. But I, before I put this on here, I let it air dry for about 10 minutes before I even put it on here. Made sure it was totally dry before I put the wax on. Okay, you can see here, you say, oh, the OS is coming off, well, it's not. It may be a little bit, I guess, but there we go with that. Now, put this back on. It's kind of, kind of like a kerosene smell to it, the Renaissance wax. But here I have a half inch felt pad, get it from Amazon, put it on my rotary tool. Now I'm just gonna buff lightly the black, and it'll make it even more, 
When I use this, it's going to make it shinier as well. kind of see it right now getting shinier I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and I'm gonna go ahead and shine up the rest of it with a, a felt pad and then we'll come back and see the result okay I finished buffing now with the uh, felt pad my rotary tool that's you can almost see a, a waxy look to it it's uh, that was just like I said Renaissance wax a coating over the LOS and just buffed it out. Give you a look here. Now the next thing is probably the most relaxing part for me and now we're going to get the finish it off here and I'm going to use 000040 it's 40 steel wool and the technique We'll just be slightly buffing here. I'm just going to show you a little bit of it. I'm not going to sit here and buff the entire thing on the video, but uh, I'll show you the end result. But here we go with just you know slightly buff. And after I buff with the steel wool, I'm then going to use my polishing cloths, and this is what I recommend. That kind of serves a silver jewelry jewelry polishing cloth. I have some wipes here. Sometimes I wipe it just a little bit, but I use primarily. The, uh, the cloth here that make it even more shinier and actually probably put another coat of uh, Renaissance wax on so we'll see but uh, you know you don't sit here and just start rubbing like that you just sit there and just just lightly start buffing you might have to put a little bit of pressure but you can start seeing the copper come through just buffing up the high points right now. I'll just do this part right here, the vertical bar, and just start, you can just kind of see maybe. I'll bring it up close here in a second. But you don't scrub, just lightly dap. You know, if I got music going. I'll sit here and just kind of look it over. And I'll get it to what I like. Actually, I'm making this one for my wife. The other one I took to the boutique to sell. I think it kind of crushed her a little bit. <laughs> she really liked wearing it. But uh, let's see if I can give you an idea here. You can start seeing the copper high, high points coming out but I have a lot you know I have a long way to go on it I'm not quite finished yet but just got to give an idea of what zero 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 steel wool can do I'll go ahead and finish buffing this out buffing out the high points taking the jewelry cloth to it and shining it up a bit I'll make a necklace for it and I think I'll be finished. Well, as you can see, I've now completed making my Celtic cross using the three Canadian large scents. I've antiqued it with a LOS, finished buffing the high points with steel wool, and uh, I added a brown suede lace cord necklace to match the cross. I believe it gives it a more rustic look. I do hope that, you know, everyone who watches my series of videos not only enjoys seeing the processes involved in making a Celtic cross from coins, but also picks up some different ideas along the way, you know, to enhance your own techniques in this wonderful and enjoyable craft of ours. If you did, please feel free to like my videos. And until next time, thanks for watching and keep on ringing.